I want to thank you so much for your time and I really want to make sure that we use the time effectively so that you, ha you take one key takeaway and I think that was one of the key points from Monica today. So with that in mind, I'm just going to grab this. We might get started. A little bit about me because I think it's similar to Monica. Um, I'm from Ernst & Young but I wanted to give you a little bit of history about where I'm from. So unlike most of you in this room here um, who are either clinicians or healthcare providers, I've got a humble beginning in health from 1996 up the road at QUT where I did health service management. I graduated in 19, uh, 1998 and since that time I've actually been in and around the healthcare system. I worked with some really inspirational hospital administrators in both rural and remote and uh, metropolitan areas. I worked at Charleville, I've worked at Roma, I've worked at Mount Isa, I was lucky enough to work at the PA, I was lucky enough to work at Logan Hospital. Actually, quite interestingly for you, uh, for this group here, 18 years ago today, well not so much today, but this month, I attended my first electronic medical health record meeting at Redcliffe Hospital in 1998. They were early pioneers and trendsetters in this space, and even today, right now, I'm actually going to be talking about our electronic medical records. So it's actually quite interesting. Um, I then caught a bus to Canberra and I decided to leave Queensland Health and go down and work for an organisation which is now called Medicare Australia. Uh, my mentor here, who was Dr Steve Buckland, told me to go down and understand Medicare and I did that. And I did that in the 20s, uh, the 2000s, which at that time, they were actually experiencing disruption and innovation around Medicare Online and PBS Online. And they were trying to shift their business models from face-to-face -face and telephony into that particular channel. Today, what I do a lot now is I'm on the other side. I'm actually a consultant and I'm working with some really amazing clients such as the Department of Human Services, Department of Health, even Queensland Health. I was up at Lady Salento most of this week in regards to their electronic medical records. And I'm just really excited by what lays ahead of us. So with that in mind, what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about where we are today. We're excited but equally challenged by digital health. I want to talk about the new relationship that the digital consumer or the digital patient wants to have in digital health. I want to talk about how the, cons how the, digital, uh, the consumer will fundamentally reshape, in similar tone that Monica said, reshape the traditional healthcare pathways through technology. And then I want to close off with an idea around healthcare of tomorrow. So if there was a healthcare app that could alert you, your family member, your carer, your GP, your primary healthcare provider, that you're about to have or will in real time an allergic reaction to a prescribed medicine, who here would want to have that? I know I would. Can you put your hands up? Yep, fantastic. So I can see across the room that there are some people that would want to embrace that particular technology. There are some people here that are still a little bit nervous about those technologies. I think that's basically where we are today with the perfect storm. A lot of the digital health strategies that I see today and that I've experienced are being really driven by also misinformation and myth. And I really want to plant that for right now. Okay? We do hear about digital health services and mobile health services being a game changer. I actually agree that they are, but there is still all out there. I think there's a great divide around the value and benefit of digital health as we start to mature our understanding of what it is. We hear about improved safety and quality outcomes. We hear about improved clinical workflows. We also hear about improved or, uh, or increased productivity and efficiency, lower cost. Okay? That's what's been happening. Okay? But on the same time, we're also seeing that consumers are starting to become much more comfortable with digital especially when it relates to sensitive and complex matters around healthcare. What we're seeing today is that it's more, it's not just about, I can see that I'm quite nervous. It's not more about just the health record. It's actually more about consumers being comfortable with how they use mobile and digital technologies. We're seeing a lot more around remote models of care. We're seeing a lot more around sensors. We're seeing a lot more of monitoring about wearables. We're seeing more access to information in particular. And how do we use that information even more so? Oops, let's go back. Back one. In terms of moving into the future though, 
I think as we start to think about digital health strategies by 2020, we really need to understand and get very clear what the consumer preference is for digital, in particular around the digital channel and also the digital service. You've seen these before. We all know that the population is aging. Monica made some specific mentions of some great innovation that's occurring in this space. We know that the current models of care are constrained. We know that the way in which we need to deliver services for the aged especially need to change. We know that digital may actually be an option on how to engage differently with the older generation about how they manage their care. Similarly, we know that there is more complexity or more comorbidities in the way in which we're making decisions around our life choices. Okay? We know that there are plenty of technologies that are emerging in regards to management of diabetes. I have heard that a, that a private sector organisation is working with the Cancer Council to actually scan photos on Facebook, Instagram to have a look at whether or not they have melanomas. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Now, where we are today and what the research has revealed is some really interesting and some really exciting insights about what the digital consumer really wants. Okay? Those insights are going to start to inform how healthcare agencies or departments start to think about the next steps in their digital healthcare journey. Insight number one that I want you guys to think about. Consumers want a different relationship with technology. We know that we have the internet of things, so hopefully everyone knows what that is. We know that we have wearables. We know that there are health applications and social media. Okay? We know that ideally there is going to be an overwhelming degree of choice for consumers, carers and providers in this space into the future. An example of this is there are actually 165,000 M Health apps globally. It's quite a lot, actually, quite a lot. We know that in Australia, our national stewardship around digital health is maturing through the establishment of the Australian Digital Health Agency. However, there are no regulations or accreditations, formal accreditations, around mobile health apps. We do have the TGA, the Therapeutic Goods Association, and the MTAA, which is the Medicine Terminology Association of Australia. But quite frankly, some of these apps and the proliferation of those apps, from a clinical and patient safety perspective, from my personal opinion, are a little bit rubbish. And we have to be quite mindful of that. So we need to be innovative, we need to be disruptive, but we also have to be cautious and mindful of how we go forward. Insight number two, the evolution of the digital patient or the digital consumer. They want to be active and engaged. Who, who doesn't want to be? Yep. But at the same time, as we move towards 2020, we also need to be quite mindful of consumer overdiagnosis, consumer self-diagnosis, and the relationship that the consumer will have with the healthcare provider. What do I mean by overdiagnosis? Well, who here has a phone? Who here has a laptop, an iPad? Who here has a Garmin? We're going to have a wealth of information. Yep. We're going to be checking this information all the time. We're then going to be self-diagnosing ourselves to say, hey, I think Dan has got some real serious problems. Then we're going to enter into the healthcare system and we actually might start to challenge the relationship with the healthcare provider. So we have to be really sensitive about how we mature consumerism, you, I, everyone in this room, and how we start to interact and engage differently with the people who we have trusted for centuries, which are the, the clinicians. Insight number three, consumers want a personal and individual experience, and Monica touched on this. From my perspective, and similar, we're going to see the consumer in the centre of this ecosystem. We're going to see the consumer curate their own health experience across their life event or circumstances. We're going to see digital services tackle the end-to-end -end value chain of a consumer's life across the healthcare system. Yep. That's going to be really exciting. Yep. From a service delivery perspective, 
we're going to be able to give our clinicians greater information. We've got to clean a lot of that information up over the next few years, but we're going to give them a lot more information to make better decisions. We're going to see new entrants actually enter into the ecosystem of healthcare. And we're also going to see, using that information, a lot more cognitive analytics, or what I like to call behavioural analytics, to actually start to guide the consumer to make new and different choices about the models of care. I think that's really exciting. Insight number four that I've got with you is that consumers, or the digital consumer, will want to flip the pathway. And what, I, what do I mean by that? So we all know that there are challenges in the current system. We know that we don't like waiting at the GP. We know that unfortunately sometimes we have to wait based on triage levels at the hospital. I had my son in at emergency in Canberra last week because he did his um, clavicle after football. Uh, he was graded a triage level four and we had to wait quite a long time for my 10 year old to be looked at. What we're gonna see through digital again, is that digital consumer, that digital patient wanting to be more active and engaged and they will want to be starting to look at different models such as self-monitoring at home, yeah? assisted monitoring at home, care at home and we know that there are a number of pilots that are happening, especially at the Commonwealth level and looking across integrated sectors before they make a decision to hop into the primary care, the secondary care and also the specialist areas. I think that's an exciting time. Now, what I've put up here, and I do apologise that this has come up like this. I'm actually working with some really exciting people in healthcare digital space. Um, Monica provided such a great overview of some specific people here in Queensland. I've actually put up a case scenario. So this is about post-treatment monitoring. So, if I get this right, Jane's son Alex has diarrhoea and he's vomiting. He enters into the primary care network through his GP. The GP diagnoses a treatment plan moving forward. Now, Jane is given a choice. Jane can come back to her GP in three days time or Jane can take up a mobile health app, register for that mobile health app and have prescribed observa observations and alerts to make sure her son Alex is okay in line with that treatment plan. So every day, Jane will get some questions. How's Alex doing here? How's Alex doing there? How's his water intake, etc.? Is everything okay? Jane will say yes, no, yes, no. There will be a triage system sitting behind that to say, okay, before Jane goes back to the GP and waits, before Jane goes into the emergency hospital and waits, what can Jane do differently? Because Jane wants the power. She wants that sense of care, that sense of ease, that her son Alex is okay. So using a different approach, a new model, how we actually engage with people such as pharmacy, primary healthcare providers, or even a GP before going in, is gonna be the, the steps that we're gonna look at into the future, if not now. And I think that's really exciting times. Now, in closing, I again got the, the font wrong. What I wanna be really clear around here is that I'm really excited by digital health. I'm really excited what mobile health brings as well. For me though, as we move towards 2020, we still have to be cautiously mindful that technology becomes the last big decision and that we think really carefully about patient outcomes, about clinical risk, about how we're going to use people's data, about how we're going to make sure privacy concerns are alleviated, and then let's have a look at the technology. Thank you very much. I hope you found that interesting.